Welcome to Q Aquatics and Exotics. My name's Susie and today we're going to talk about stress reduction. Now I know I use my fish tanks all the time to reduce stress and let me tell you life can be very stressful but today I want to talk about 10 ways you can reduce the stress in your fish. The first thing, cycle your aquarium. There's a lot of different ways you can cycle your aquarium. You can do the fish in cycle that puts a lot of stress on your fish. Or you can do a fishless cycle. Um, I just did a video on how to do a fishless cycle. You can check out that video over there. You can speed it up by adding bacteria into your tank to get the cycle going. Or you can use uh, a couple different methods, adding ammonia or just feeding your tank. But any way you cycle your tank, make sure it's completely cycled before you add that fish. Another way you can reduce the stress in your fish quarantine your fish. Make sure when you get those new fish that you put them in a quarantine tank. Now whether you use medicine or whether you just watch them, that's up to you. I'm not getting into how to quarantine, but quarantine your fish. Let me tell you, the fish that already exist in that tank will be very happy about it. Reduce their stress. If you put a fish in there that might be sick or have some kind of parasites, you're going to stress out all the fish. So make sure you quarantine your fish and make sure they're good to go before adding them to your tank. Number three, don't overstock your tank. Now I'm not here to tell you how many fish you can put in a 55 gallon tank because it depends on the fish and it depends on a lot of different things. But do not overstock your tank. By overstocking your tank, it can cause extra stress on a fish. Number four, to go along with that, is make sure the fish that you're adding are compatible. You don't want to put a little tiny fish in that's a bully, picking on a big one thinking that they're going to match each other's aggression level or that they both like the same kind of temperature, same pH. Let's say you've got that. You have some fish that are top level swimmers, other fish that swim on the bottom, and even more that are in the middle. You don't want to stock your fish with all top level swimmers because even though you have the right amount of fish, you'll be crowding the same area. And you want to make sure that they're not getting out-competed for food. So make sure your fish are compatible. Number five, make sure you're testing your water. Sometimes water can look crystal clear, but it might have something going on. So test your water every once in a while and make sure that there's no spikes going on, that everything is copacetic. It's very simple to do and it takes very little time and it will help your fish tremendously. And six along that lines, try to keep the water as stable as possible. I know it's really hard when you have, let's say, soft water, but you want a hard water fish, so you add some buffering agents to keep it hard water. And every time you do a water change, it's that constant fluctuation. Um, there are ways to buffer your water to keep it steadier. And if it's salt or brackish, make sure they're at the right salinity level. If you're using a buffering agent, make sure that the water you're putting in matches because too much fluctuation puts a lot of stress on the fish. Same thing with temperature. Like if you wanted to raise the temperature in your tank, you would do it very slightly over a long period of time versus just up and at five degrees. I mean, that's, that can be pretty stressful. Your best bet is to keep the water perimeters stable. Sometimes I think keeping it stable is a little more important than this fish likes hard water, especially if they're third or fourth generation versus soft water, but keep it stable. Number seven, cleaning your aquarium, especially the front glass. Oh baby, hello. Yeah, you, I wanna make sure I clean the glass off, all the rims and the lids. I wanna do the gravel vac, or uh, if I've got sand, I'll do the hover vac. I use a lot of sponge filters, so I want to make sure that I rinse off the sponge filters. Just keep my aquarium clean. The fish will appreciate it. Don't you, bud? Ah, what a beauty. Eight, perform water changes. It might seem like a simple task, but it will really help your fish. You can, you can restore and maintain a balanced aquarium by doing water changes. Not only are you going to be help maintaining a balanced aquarium by removing and diluting harmful chemicals, as well as replenishing vital elements, all through water changes. 
Now I'm not going to tell you how often to do it. You're going to have to play around with your aquarium and get into the groove, get into a nice rhythm where your tank is balanced. Number nine, don't overfeed your fish. It's one of the most common causes of fish loss. I know they look all cute and everything coming up to the tank and they're always acting like they're hungry. Stick to your feeding schedule. And I know how cool is it when people come over to show them how they feed them. If you're going to do something like that, make sure you don't feed your fish at their regular time if you know you're going to have company and going to want to show off your fish and especially how cool they look when they're eating. Because that extra food, if they're not eating, is going to accumulate and any of the uneaten food could turn to waste. It's also, if you feed them too much, they're going to create a lot more waste themselves. Now there's always exceptions to this, whether you're talking about a fry or certain hospital tanks or I'm talking for the majority, don't overfeed your fish. Your fish would actually appreciate that. Now there's times uh, I put too much food in. I scoop out as much as I can, do a 25% water change. The next day do another 25% water change. I do my best to clean it up. Accidents happen. And 10, make sure your fish are eating the right kind of food. The top swimmers kind of have an upturned mouth and they would probably need floating food. The mid swimmers have straight mouths and they would want the, the food that's slowly sinking. And the bottom feeders would have the mouth that's turned down to grab the food off the bottom. You want to make sure your food lands in all different places for all your fish. And you want to make sure that if you have herbivores, you're feeding them what they need. If you have like wood cats, you got to make sure they get in some wood. You got your omnivores, your carnivores, your piscivores, um, your herbivores. You just want to make sure that the fish that's in that tank is getting the food. As an example, I go out of my way to make sure the food that I'm feeding my lobster in my saltwater tank is inside of a baster so I can actually get it down and into his hut because he doesn't like coming out for the food. And the other fish in the tank will just eat all the food before he gets any. So you kind of want to make sure everybody's getting food, everybody's getting the right kind of food. That kind of goes along with being compatible. So these were my 10 simple tasks that you can do to reduce the stress level in your fish. After all, I get so much pleasure out of my aquariums and my fish. So thanks for coming along and checking out the 10 ways to reduce stress in your fish. If you can think of some other ways to reduce the stress in your fish, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Hey everybody, it's Susie Q. Na na hey everybody, it's Susie Q. So come along with me. Said I'm Susie Q.